It's an honor to be in the presence of God, wouldn't you say? Just to worship and glorify the name of the Lord. There is nobody like our God. He alone is God. Come on, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Today, I want to share, continue the message on the miracles of Jesus. And I want to talk about the power of faith. The power of your faith in God. My scripture is found in the book of Matthew chapter 15. Talking about the Lord Jesus came to the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And met a woman who was a Gentile. Verse 22. And the woman who was a Canaanite came out of the coast and she cried and saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for my daughter is, son of David, for my daughter is grievously tormented or vexed by a devil. But the Bible said he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and said, Lord, send her away, for she crieth after us. Verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, it is not meat. For me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. And she said, shoot, Lord, yet, uh, shoot, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your fate. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Come on, from that hour. Now, now, now here is a woman who came to Jesus. Her daughter was possessed and she came to Jesus without a covenant. She had two problems that was mass, massive. Her daughter was demon possessed and she was a Gentile. She was outside of the commonwealth of Israel. She had no grounds to come and expect a miracle from God. But yet she believed. It is no grounds, no law, nothing that he is supposed to do for her what she desire him to do. But yet she believed God. For the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, 6, he says without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know, when you really have faith, you will recognize the only source of your deliverance is in Jesus. No matter where I am, no matter what anybody say to me, this woman said, you know, I need a miracle. And the only place I can get it is from Jesus. When you recognize and you know that you know that you know that he, Jesus, is the only way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. Can you say that with me? I am the way in the truth and the life. When you know that I got a miracle, when you are desperate and you know your religion can't help you. She knew that her family can't help. She knew everybody that she knew in her life couldn't make a difference. The only one that can heal me or deliver my daughter is Jesus. I'm going to come to him regardless what anybody say. I'm going to come. And the Bible says she came. And she called and cried to him and said, Lord, thou son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievously tormented by a devil. But the Bible says he answered her not a word. But you see, everything that he is going to do with her is going to bring her to the commensurate level of faith that will justify God to do for her 
what God, only God can do. He is going to do and work in her life for her to come to that place. And the Bible said he did not answer. What do you do when you call and God don't answer? When God is silent, that's not the time to be silent. That's the time to call and keep calling. Come on, hallelujah. If you call and nothing happened, he didn't answer you. It look as though nothing is working. That's not the time to give up. She refused to be disappointed because I called and he didn't answer. The Bible said she kept calling to him. It's like blind Bartimaeus he called and the people said shut your mouth you are poor you are blind you should stay quiet and the Bible said he cried out so much more the word of the Lord says she did not he did not answer but you see great faith do refuse to be disappointed you refuse that I call today and it happened. If it didn't happen today, how many of you know it can happen tomorrow? If it didn't happen tomorrow, it can happen next week. I'm not going to give up today because I called and nothing happened. I believe what he said. He says, call upon me in the time of trouble and I will hear and I will answer you. The second thing about her faith is not only that she refused to be disappointed, but she refused to be offended. And the Bible says the disciples came to him and said to him, Lord, send her away because she cried after us. How many of you know that today in the world, people are so easy to be offended. People are offended about everything. We have become so touchy. Here is a woman here, the disciples, who's supposed to be his disciples and special. They are asking him to send her away because she cried after us. She could have said, who is crying after you? I'm not crying after you. I'm crying after him. I'm not seeking man. I am seeking the Lord of glory. How many of you know here today, you got to make up your mind. You are not going to be offended. I don't care what anybody say. I don't care what they do. Your life is not hanging on somebody. Their opinion of you don't matter nothing. The only thing that matters is what Jesus thinks. We get offended because of what people say. I'm not coming back to church because somebody acted somewhere or somebody said something or somebody did something. But this woman, her faith will not allow her to be offended. When you have a real need, you will not be offended with nobody because nobody can help me. Nobody was there when the demons are tormenting me. I come to Jesus. And what you think? Don't matter nothing. I am looking to him. And the Bible says, keep your eyes on him. Don't be offended by anyone. He just said, send her away. Send her away. And they're saying it in her presence. Telling him to send her away. But how many of you know that nobody can change his mind concerning you? Hallelujah. What he has ordained for you, he is going to bring it to pass in your life. Come on, you got to refuse to be offended. Even if they don't like you, it don't matter. He loved me. Come on, hallelujah. You don't like me, but he loved me. You think I'm nothing, but he thinks I'm something. Hallelujah. He is able to make something out of nothing. And his name might be glorified. You got to refuse to be offended. The Bible says when they did that, she didn't even respond to what they said. She couldn't be moved by their opinions. She couldn't be offended by what they say about her. The only thing she knows is I have a desperate situation and only he can make a difference in my life. The Bible says after that, Jesus said something. He said, I am 
sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She refused to be disappointed. She refused to be offended. And then she refused to be discouraged. He was literally saying, I am not sent for you. This is not your time. You have to wait until I die. You have to wait until I am resurrected for you to get your miracle. And that's what he was saying to her. But how many of you know, when you have faith, you cannot be discouraged at all. And the Bible says when he said that, you know what she did? And the Bible says she worshiped him. Come on, how many of you know that when you face some situation, you pray and nothing happened? That's not the time to pray. That's the time to worship God. You got to worship God as though everything is all right. You got to worship him even if you're sick. You got to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. David said, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. Lord, and he heard me. You see, when you pray and nothing happened, like Peter in the prison, he prayed, but he didn't just pray, he began to praise God. How many of you know that when you begin to worship God, and the same God that you bless is going to show you, I am as just as you say. When you're sick and you worship Jehovah Rapha, he is going to show you that he is your healer. Come on, when you don't have no money in your pocket and you begin to bless the God who is Jehovah Jireh, he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. There is nothing like worshiping God, church. Can you raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. There is, there is nothing like worshiping God when you are in a crisis. You confuse the devil when he expects you to cry instead of crying you begin to praise the Lord the devil expects you to give up but instead of giving up you are raising up your hands and you are blessing the name of the Lord hallelujah how many of you know when you worship God God is going to come true for you she began to worship him he is saying, he is not sent to me. He is saying, this is not my time. He is saying that he was not sent to me and I have to wait, but I can't wait. My situation can't wait. I can't wait until he dies. I can't wait until he is resurrected. I need a miracle now. I want to stop God's clock. I want God to open the door. I want God to sneak me in a miracle. And then God can go back to his timetable. Hallelujah. And in order to do it, I'm going to bless the Lord. Come on, church. I'm going to bless the Lord. I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't know how God is going to turn it around. I don't know how God is going to make a way, but I know he's going to make a way. She began to worship him. When you worship him, the Bible says, Jesus said, the time comes and now is when the true worshiper will worship God in spirit and in truth. You see, when you worship God, you tug on his heart. When you begin to tell him how wonderful he is, he is going to have to show you he is wonderful. Come on, some people here, you have been disappointed. You've gotten some bad news, but I came today to tell you, if you will worship him right where you are, he is going to make a way. You know, Jonah play, prayed in the belly of the fish. 
and he was still in the belly of the fish. You know what Jonah decided to do? I'm going to praise God in the belly of a fish under the ocean. I'm going to praise him as though everything is all right. I'm going to praise him as though my life is saved. And the Bible says when he praised God, God spoke to the fish. Are you telling me God no fish language? Yes, I'm telling you. God spoke to a man and the man disobeyed. But God spoke to the fish and the fish turned around in the ocean. And the fish swam to Nineveh. And the fish vomited Jonah on the right address. What the devil meant for evil, God is going to turn it around. For your good. In other words, the fish took Jonah to his destination. He is the first man with a submarine ride to the place God intended him to be. I came to tell somebody today, the time has come to stop worrying. Stop being offended. Stop being discouraged. And say like David to your soul, why art thou cast down, O oh my soul? Hope thou in God and begin to worship the Holy One of Israel. The Bible says she worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. And then Jesus dropped the bomb on her. Jesus said to her, must I take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? He was using an analogy of his time. He was literally saying, you are a Gentile. You are not part of the covenant. Can I, must I take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? Must I do that? But you saw real faith, don't be disappointed. Real faith, don't get offended and is not discouraged. But living faith agrees with God. She didn't argue God. She said, yes, Lord. Yes, what you're saying is true. I may not be a part of the covenant. I may not be a part of the household of Israel. But if you have an analogy of a dog, yet the dog is under the table while the children are eating. And while the children are eating, they may not be very careful. And a crumb can fall from the table and the dogs will eat it under the table. Let me tell you something, somebody here today. I know that if God can do it in the past, he is going to do it again. And he is going to do it for you. You know what the woman was saying? She was saying a crumb from you. I don't need a whole bread. You can give the children the bread. I, I don't need a whole bread. Just a crumb from you has the potential to deliver my daughter. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. The crumb can set my daughter free. Within the crumb is the potential to heal the sick. Because the word of God is the bread. And a crumb from you is powerful enough to set my daughter free. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And the crumb has the potential. Tell somebody the crumb has the potential. Your children can eat at the table and they may not even realize that just the crumb from you is able to deliver me, set me free, turn my life around and make a way for me. She is saying the crumb has the potential. And then she said the crumb has the power. I don't need the whole bread. Just a crumb from you can make a way and break the powers of darkness and set me free. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. The devil tried to make it look as though you could never get out. But I prophesy to you, you are getting out today. I prophesy to you that your torment ends today. I prophesy your life is turning around from today. 
She said a crumb, the crumb had fall from the master's table. And the dogs can eat. You can do it. You can do it within you. It's the power to deliver my daughter. It's the power to change my situation. You see, real faith don't argue with God. It agrees with God. She was literally saying to him, I agree what you say. Because you are God. You are God. But I say to you that what I desire cannot be found by in any other person. I don't have a choice. I can't go to Abraham because he don't know me. I can't go to Moses. I, I can't go to anybody else. I can't go to nowhere else. What I need is only found in you. And it is right here, right now. When she said that. Jesus said something amazing. He said, oh woman, great is your fate. You know why he said great is your fate? Because she refused to be discouraged. She refused to be offended. She refused to be disappointed. She quickly agreed with him and surrendered to the system of the spirit, the order of the spirit. But do you know that everything Jesus did was designed to bring her to the commensurate level of faith that will justify God to do for her what she desired. What she desired. God was bringing her to that place. He was bringing her to that level of faith. Jesus said, oh woman, look how he's describing. He said, oh woman, great is your faith. Many times he said to the people, he said, your faith is small. Then he said, you have no faith. But to this woman, he said, great is your faith. You believe. You don't have an alternative. You don't have a second desire or, or, or if it don't work, I'm going to do something else. All you know is to trust me. And how he responded is great. He said, oh woman, great is your fate. And then I saw something I never saw before in verse, in verse 28. He said, oh woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you according to your will. All the other places he said, be it unto you according to your faith. But to this woman, he didn't say according to your faith. He said according to your will. You see, when the devil do things in your life that has been destructive, how many of you do? No, you would never be happy just to get a miracle. What I want is for God to do what I desire to do. Hear what he said to her, according to your will. And I believe the woman had a will. I believe she had a will. You know what her will was? You know what she wanted? She wanted her daughter to be released. And today you are going home released. Everything the enemy of you shall hold you back. I say you're walking out here released from the clutches of darkness. I say you're walking out here free from the oppression of the enemy and obsession. Let me tell you something. Hear what God said. She was released. Her daughter was released from the enemy. The second thing that God did on her will was not only for her daughter to be released, but she wanted revenge on the enemy. Is she when the devil torment you? I mean, it's not good enough just to get freed. I don't know about you. I want revenge. And the Bible says, hear what Samson said. He said, strengthen me only this once that I may avenge, be re avenge of my two eyes.
Jesus, Satan has done enough in your life. And the time has come for you to rule the same things that held you back. Come on, hallelujah. For you to stamp on the things that stamp you down. For you to conquer the things that conquered you. For you to pull down the things that held you back. The Bible says the Lord Jesus told the man that was lame for 38 years. He said to the man, rise up and take up your bed and walk. And the things that you were laying on that had you captive, today you are going to rule over it in your life. Today those demons that trouble you, you're going to be able to conquer them. Not only in your life, but in the lives of others. Come on, hallelujah. Some of you, God's going to give you revenge. Revenge over those spirits. Revenge. Satan is going to have to pay you back. What the devil stole, God is going to restore it in your life. Come on, hallelujah. She was saying, you know what happened when the devil came in my family? It was such disruption, such confusion, such hell break loose in my home. I don't only want my daughter to be free, but I want the devil to have the payback for all he has done in my life. Come on, say yes, Lord. See, what we did is that we, we, we get healed and we get delivered and we're just happy just to get back what we lost. Or just to, but the time has come. There must be restoration in the house of the Lord. Come on, I said there must be restoration in the house of the Lord. When the children of the Amalekites, Amalekites came against David and they stole everything from David. And the Bible says David recovered all. All that was stolen. Revenge. But not just revenge, but restoration. I see restoration. You lose a house, God can give you back a better one. Come on, I said you lose your health, God can restore it and make you even healthier. Come on, hallelujah. You lose some friends, God can give your family back in return. And the devil stole some, some things from you, but God is able to give it back. He is going to give it back good measure. Press down and shaken together and running over. I came to prophesy in your destiny. I see you in the future. And you look much better than you do right now. I see where you are going. Hallelujah. I see what the devil did. Don't even cry no more about what he did. What the devil meant for evil. God is turning it around. Come on, say yes. God is turning it around. So he said to the woman, he said, woman, be it unto you according to what you will. I'm going to put the devil in your charge. Whatever you desire is going to be. Whatever you want, you will have. Whatever you desire, you're going to have. I see God saying that today. He is going to release in the earth his glory. There are people in the earth at this same month. You're going to see such breakthroughs in your life that you never never saw before because this is God's time for you. This is God's time. So many times we have been discouraged and frustrated. Give up. Get offended. Get distracted. Look away. Go ahead guys and get all that stuff but the time has come when God is saying to you I'm going to do what you desire I'm going to grant you the desire of your heart I'm going to make it in such a way that you will look back at this day and time in your life and you're going to praise God that God brought you low that he may raise you up high come on hallelujah God allowed the devil to empty you and he can fill you to the overflow Come on, hallelujah. God allowed the devil to whoop you and he can heal you. Come on, say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is God's time for you. You've been through the fire, but you're coming out and you wouldn't even smell like smoke. 
Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. 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 Yes, Lord. All he is saying to you, you have the power. I can do it for you. When this woman did that, God's clock stopped and God stopped it. God opened the door in the dis from the dispensation of law. God brought her into the new dispensation of grace. Grant her a miracle and start the clock back again. And God, if God can do it for her, he can do it for you. Hallelujah. Tell somebody this is my time. Come on, tell them this is my time. Tell them this is my time. This is my time. What never happened before is going to happen now. What never happened before is going to happen now. This is my time. This is my hour. Stand up on your feet with me.